Okay, what I would like to talk about is full Unicode in uh, Tickle. There has been some uh, uh, development lately in 8.6 and 8.7 uh, doing that. And uh, I want to show you the status and what's the, uh, what the ideas are how to continue. So, what's the current state of Tickle TK 8.7? How much of the full Unicode, and then I mean uh, code entries higher than 65,000? The original Unicode uh, 2 or 3 only had that number, but later it was extended. Uh, so, how does Tickle 8.7 deal with this now, how far we are? I will talk a little bit, a little bit how it's done in Underwish. Very simple, uh, just extend it to 32 bits and uh, that's it. And then everything works, everything is solved. Well, not really, but that's what I'll talk about it. A thing that's not done, regular expressions. What's the issue about that? Uh, there was recently voted on one of my tips on getting uh, new encodings, UTF-16 and UCF-2. Uh, that's uh, uh, added now, that's part of the way uh, going there. Uh, there are some Windows special functions now that convert uh, T -char, T char with uh, UTF-8 and reverse that are kind of a remnant from the past. Well, how I think we should deal with this. Okay, one of the problems with under is, is uh, binary incompatibility. And uh, there are some ideas how to solve that. So get all the features without the troubles. Uh, well, and then final step to tick on nine. Uh, how, to, uh, how do I view that we should go on uh, there? How to uh, solve the incompatibilities? Okay, there are two tips already handled, 388 for Tickle 8.6 and 389. It's uh, done in 8.7, and that's already a big step in the uh, way to get uh, emoji and every fancy stuff into uh, uh, Tickle. Uh, there is a variable you can compile Tickle with, and you compile extension with, and that's Tickle UTF Max. Uh, and that max is not in favor of our host here, but uh, it's uh, the name of the variable. In Tickle 8.6, UTF max was, had the value of 3. That means that it can handle a maximum of 3 bytes Unicode characters. Well, then there's a limit. You cannot go higher than that. If it's higher than that, then Tickle 8.6 simply doesn't recognize it. It says, okay, that's invalid UTF-8. So, split it in bytes and handle the individual bytes. Well, it's not invalid UTF-8 at all, so that's totally the wrong way to handle it, but that's the way it uh, was. One of the things that are done later is to, to extend the Unicode table. Um, you can do a string is graph, for example, to see if it's a graphical character. Well, everything over 65,000 was not in the table because the table was only so long as uh, 16 bits. Well, that has been extended in 8.6, so in 8.7, sorry. Uh, so even in higher characters, you can see what type of uh, character it is. The interesting, uh, so the UTF-8 encoder, decoder was revised so that it can handle, handle four bytes UTF-8 characters normally. I give some examples on that later. And uh, in 8.6, we have uh, added handling of surrogates in order to remedy some of the uh, first problems. For example, in string uh, range, if you have uh, uh, basically in Tickle, all Unicode is 16 bit. So that means the only way to store a 32 bit. Unicode characters is split it in two, in an upper surrogate and a lower surrogate. Well, that means you have two characters instead of one, and if you do a string range between a string, you might shop it in the middle of the UTF-8 uh, uh, character. Uh, 
internally, so it's still UTF-16. Um, uh, but uh, you can also set the tickle UTF max variable to 6. That's what Androwis does. Then internally everything switched to 32 bits. That has, um, well, the advantage that everything works as you expected. Uh, all Unicode characters have a length of 1. They are not split into surrogates uh, internally. Um, well, uh, but in tickle 8.7, uh, well, regular expressions are not uh, not done yet. It also has a big table of the of the of the regular expression classes. Uh, I'll show you something. Okay, let's first switch to do. Um, uh, show you. An example. Well, uh, I'm running this on a SIGWIN, so I don't know how that counts for the non Windows. It's running on Windows. But uh, factor you, you view it as a complete uh, uh, Linux environment. It's very similar. Only TK is compiled as a Windows DLL, and the, and the SIGWIN. Tickle shell can simply load that, so you don't need an X uh, server or something like that. Well, in TK you have library demos, and there's a nice uh, uh, demo in it. So let's run it. Of course, it opens in the other screen. Here it is. In the second demo here, you have labels and Unicode text. I move it here as well. I'll enlarge it a little bit. Um, I think I can. Then that's on this screen. It's a little bit difficult to work with two screens. That's better. So if you run the, run the demo, then you see that, it's, I hope you can see it, there are emoji there. And that's, uh, well, the, the smiling face, the pile of poo, the Facebook uh, thumbs up, and uh, NL, that should be the Dutch flag, I put that there. Uh, because that are, that are two uh, Unicode characters that form a combination. So not only higher surrogate, surrogate, lower surrogate, but two of them are needed to form some uh, emoji. Well, you can see that it's uh, displayed correctly. If we look at the coder, then... Well, you can see this is the tickle coder what adds uh, this line, and they all have backslash capital U, and then you can go over the uh, over the range, and you can see this one one f six zero that's the smiley face, one f four a nine that's the pile of poo, one f four 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 d. That's the uh, Facebook uh, thumbs up. And those two together, they are the, that's the Dutch flags. Uh, well, you can see it looks, it looks good. But some strange things are going on. Let's uh, fiddle with it a little bit. Let's see what happens if we... Reverse it. Well, we do it like this. So 
Just we want it backwards, the same uh, symbols. Then let's, let's see how it looks like. <coughs> we run the demo. Well, that's not quite how it uh, should be. The reason is that the string reverse function doesn't handle upper or lower surrogates correctly. So it's, uh, they are swept as well as shouldn't be. So the lower surrogate is before the higher surrogate. Well, what happens then, because these are a range of uh, higher Unicode characters, is that they are mapped wrongly. The upper surrogate that was a part of the smiley face now becomes part of the pile of poo. And, uh, well, there is left a lone lower surrogate at the beginning. Well, that's displayed as this. And afterwards, with the Dutch flag, it goes totally wrong. So this is a little demonstration that in Tickle 8.7, although we are a big part, but splitting those high-low surrogates, keeping it internally at 16-bit, that's... Well, people will get surprised with uh, uh, certain things. There are some more examples. So let's uh, close this uh, demo. Um, go back to the presentation. So we are not there yet. Uh, at the moment, at Tickle 8.7, there are three compilation modes. You can compile it with, U with Tickle UTF Max is three, uh, or with four, or with bigger than four, typically six. Um, at the moment, all operation of UTF Max is three, like it was in 8.6, is uh, stripped off. So uh, it's actually the same F as four. Uh, if you compile it with UTF Max is three, it will just handle everything. You might say, hey, don't we get some uh, buffer overflows? Uh, no, we don't get bu buffer overflows. And I will tell you uh, why 8.7 still can handle a buffer sizes of 3, even though uh, we uh, well should expect, hey, that's not enough. A typical decoder, the main function in this is tickle UTF to UniGAR, and it has, it needs a character pointer where the result is written, and it needs a source. So if you want to transfer UTF-8 to something else, you will typically have a loop in which you jump over the source code, and you get character by character. If you have UTF maxis 4, then uh, still the Tickle Unicar is still 16 bits. So you have to challenge what happens if you have a 4-byte UTF-8 uh, character. Well, in this loop, Tickle UTF to Unicode car will return the number of char characters uh, consumed. And so we, uh, the source pointer, we if it are one byte, then it will jump one byte. If you are two, if you are more, then it will jump more. And that will be maximum in Tickle 8.6, three bytes, because it can only handle three bytes UTF-8 uh, characters. So typically it looks like this. You don't need to initialize it because, uh, well, it's written by this function. Well, the danger here is if Tickle UTF Unicar would uh, ever return zero, then the source pointer is not updated. You can get into an uh, endless uh, loop where it, ne it never goes out, because then it will keep looking, uh, reading the same bytes over and over again, and that's it. Well, in 8.7, the way to write this function is move the definition of CH out of the loop and initialize it. And this location is kind of 
uh, remembering the previous character and introducing a kind of state in this function. That way it can handle uh, surrogates very well. If the uh, characters are four bytes, then you can ma make sure that the first time you call it, it will return a high surrogate in this character. And that way, because in the second call you still have a pointer to the same value, you can remember that as a kind of state and make sure that the second call you produce the lower character. So, um, the initial implementation, the first call of this function returns zero and the pointer was kept to the same location. And the second call, it um, saw the upper surrogate in that variable and think, oh, I already had it, so let's produce the lower surrogate now. Uh, well, because of the problem described in the previous page, it's not wise to let this function ever return zero. So therefore, later the implementation was changed. If this function encounters a four-byte UTF-8 character, then the first call, it will read the first three bytes, and that contains all the bits necessary to compose the highest surrogate, and then it will advance one place. And the second call, it looks at the remaining uh, bytes and it composes the lower surrogate. And then we are back where we were in 8.6. This function always returns a maximum of three. So uh, it still has the same guarantee that it always advances maximum three bytes, minimum one byte. So the endless loop is gone and this function without Hardly any API changes. You only have to not you have to supply uh, a room for uh, for the state, and it can handle it with a buffer size of three, and it can handle lower, higher surrogates. If you compile it with particular uh, UTF uh, max is six, okay, then the unicar will be 32 bits. And uh, well, everything will go in one, one uh, pass. Um, so that means, in fact, in tickle 8.7. Uh, okay, we have a question. It gets the first time it... Uh, yes. He says that this function is called twice, first time with half a character. The comment below is without the character. Yes. And this uh, is something... What's standing in the comment? Do something with character. Yeah, that means the character you got... You yeah, can, but uh, I didn't get a in character in the f with the first call. I just got half of it. Uh, yes, that means you get only the higher surrogate in the first call, and that might be incomplete, so in the second call of the loop, you have to do something wrong. What you get out is here uh, a repeated list of 16-bit uh, Unicode characters. And if you have a 4-byte uh, UTF-8, then you need two calls of this function to get it complete. The first time will be incomplete, but the next time, it will be completed. Oh, where Whether do I see whether it is complete or not? Um, yeah, I, it's, it's like he wants UTF to a full character, a full 32. A full 32 bit character, yes. Yeah. And you cannot do that if particular Unicare is only 16 bits, then you cannot do that in one pass. So, so what's in UTF-16 encoding, it is split in two 16-bit characters. Okay. Upper surrogate yeah. and a lower surrogate. And that's what I'm doing it. So if the UTF-8 character is more than three bytes, then this function can split it into so upper, lower surrogate. Actually, you have do something with the 16 bits you got. Yes. Yeah. 
do something with the 16-bit, you might get it out in UTF-16 encoding. It depends what you want to do. Append it to something, display it to the screen, uh, whatever. But this is the basic function that is used in a lot of other places in the encoding, the UTF-16 encoding in a lot of places. It's kind of a workaround for being able to do an 8.7 the maximum we can do with keeping the API as compatible as, as possible. It's not perfect because uh, if you have a three byte character that's missing the last one, this function will not detect it. It will simply put the higher surrogate, hey, I'm happy, I got the three bytes, and then the lower surrogate, it's missing. So you, if you put something invalid in, you will get something invalid out, and this decoder won't uh, detect it, won't give uh, any error, errors. But that's the thing. But what we see is in UTF, in tickle 8.7, we defined a buffer size of, five, of four, but really using this encoder three is enough because it does three bytes uh, at the step. Nothing goes wrong if you compile your extension with a buffer size of 3 and then use this. It still, still can uh, consume 4 byte UTF uh, 8 characters, still do the right thing. Okay, so how it's done in, uh, in Androish? Well, of course, uh, Christian can tell much more about it, but on the trunk, there's simply uh, UTF um, max is set to six. So then uh, everything is uh, uh, okay, nothing to worry about. Little, costs a little bit ma more memory, but that's it. Yes? That's my question. For tickle nine, would it be good to go? Yeah, and for tickle nine, wouldn't it be good to have 32 bits for unicars? Uh, for 9, well, not for 8.7. Yes, I think the answer is yes, that would be good. But there are some... Uh, Do we have this plan already? No, we have this plan, but uh, there is a tip describing okay. that, proposing that. But it's just brand new. I'm not satisfied with the text yet. So, so from going from 8.7 to 9, I would expect that something breaks, and I think this is acceptable. So well, I... I don't think everyone will agree uh, with, with that, but okay. things can be done about I mean... But, but <laughs> we have to break X someday. Uh, yes, but as omelette. little as possible. I think as little as possible. So I would like to give the people... To make a bigger Yes, <laughs> I think. Yes, but uh, that's exactly the goal of this presentation, how we can break as little as X uh, as possible and still provide 32 internals. So yes, I would uh, like Tickle 9 to be 32-bit internally, so that all those problems are gone. But I still want to provide, hey, if there are some extensions that don't know that the Unicar is 32-bit, so we provide them some function that those, those extensions still run. That's what this is about. Well, there's also the WTF-8 experiment. Well, WTF means Wobbly Transformation Format. Let's, let's make that clear first. There's nothing wrong here. Um, the Wobbly Transformation Format, that's kind of... Um, uh, well, I think uh, Christian can explain it. But uh, for me, it's not fully clear what this branch exactly does, but it does more splitting of surrog surrogates than the, than the uh, original. Maybe you can tell in a few words what's the difference between the two branches. Sorry, in few words, uh, it does not make uh, four-byte UTF sequences, but it lets the surrogates survive in UTF. That means you have for a surrogate pair mm -hmm. two three-byte UTF sequences. That's yeah. the difference to, to uh, the real UTF-8. Yeah. I had a look at that branch. Well, if I look at what modifications has to be made everywhere, I, I don't like it anymore. It's so much. I think it's a failed experiment, sorry. But, uh, but 
it gave a lot of inspiration, I think, for this talk anyway. Many of the ideas herein, they are de derived from Andres. I had a look on there, hey, how did he uh, solve uh, all those things and in which way it is suitable for 8.7. Many of the changes are, are derived from that. Okay, some examples of things that go wrong now in 8.7. For example, the regular expressions, if you write this, the, if you see if this is a pile of pool without everything else, well, you would expect that it returns one. Three minutes left. Sorry? Three minutes left. Okay. You would expect that it would give one, but it doesn't in 8.0. And here are some other examples. This A, that's the uh, mathematical A, that's also above the 65,000. So we'll speed up a little bit. Um, the tips that are going to tickle 8, 9 uh, is first of one is 547. That's what I want to get rid of the Unicode encoding. Uh, I merged it today into the main uh, branch, so it's available now. So no Unicode anymore, let's call it UTF-16 or UCF-2. That has some internal uh, 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 aspects that is, well, useful as a prerequisite for the other ones. Uh, there are some special functions in Windows, tickle win t card to UTF. Well, uh, in the past it was used to switch between uh, the uh, Windows 95-98 mode and uh, Windows 2000 mode, in which internal everything is 16 bits. Well, this function is not needed for that special things anymore because we don't have older than uh, Windows XP anymore. Everything below that is not supported anymore. And this function also has a strange thing that the source length argument of this function is in bytes. It's not in... Uh, characters. So every time you call this function, you have to multiply the length with 2 in order to get the same result. So this API is quite wrong in my uh, ID. So my suggestion would be, and that's a tip I recently wrote, 548, to, to have a new function, tickle UTF-16 to UTF-D string. Well, this might be familiar. There is already a tickle Unicode to UTFD string that switches with the, uh, with the settings. Well, you can provide a 16-bit version of this uh, and therefore get rid of those uh, old functions. Okay. Uh, one more thing. In order to um, do this smoothly, to switch between 32 and 16 bits, those are the functions that... Uh, I would like to be deprecated, and I think that's what a big discussion will be uh, in the future. May, how much pain will it give for the people if they don't, cannot use those functions anymore? Uh, maybe you have to write some wrapper with that. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's it. Uh, the same with the UTF2 Unicar character, there will be a 16-bit, uh, uh, that's in the same tip. Uh, all of this is in the UTF Max uh, branch. That's are the steps from 8.7 that I'm going to propose to get some of the remedies uh, of that solved. I think that's it. Any questions? That's one question. <laughs> This uh, question concerns the writing um, in Latin letters. We write from the left to the right, but in Hebrew, Yiddish, and Arab, we write from the right to the left. And what I observed is, for example, when I write uh, texts in Yiddish, uh, then in Linux, uh, maybe it appears correct, but when I transfer the text into a Windows computer, then it, the 
um, sequences reversed and uh, did uh, the new uh, tickle maybe solve this problem? Or? Uh, no, this even is decided. It's a different problem than here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the demo I've showed you, the Unicode demo, there's mm -hmm. also a switch if it's a Mac then do it this way, and if it's a Windows, then do it reverse. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So on different formats, yeah, yeah. Some it's because so uh, that still needs to be uh, yeah, yeah. decided. Because I think there is a, a sign that you can uh, indicate in the text that the following text is in reverse order. Uh, if you use this sign, maybe this solves the problem? Or Yeah, I have no <laughs> idea how to okay. solve okay. that. It's not ah, yeah. my uh, expertise. Uh -huh. Okay. What you're talking about is the text rendering engine, and that needs someone to work on it uh, who actually understands the issues and can read text in multiple different orders, which uh, I can't. Um, so it, the text in 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 if you, if you're in the demo, then the text for the for for the apple is actually in the correct order inside in the source there and what's needed is to make it so that that order is the is the is rendered correctly on windows mm -hmm. and that it involves figuring out how to feed the right chunks of information into into the drawing engine and i don't yeah. I, I can't solve that. It's not. It's, it's just too um, too far out of my expertise area. So let's agree that on Windows it's not correct now. We know that, but we don't know correct. how to solve it. So if yeah. you have ideas, not correct. 